On this week's episode, I'm going to be looking at bass and getting kind of a dub and reggae tone. It's the one that I use. There's a lot of different varieties and a lot of ways to do this, but this is what I do personally and have been for years. A couple of things I remember reading. I love biographies and reading about musicians and what they do, what they've done, because you always learn something. It's not necessarily the the wild ac excesses and activities. It's what they play, what the instruments they use, the settings they use, how they recorded, things like that. That's really of interest to me. And so what I got years ago was the bass player from Motown, James Jamerson, a master bass player, man. Absolutely love this guy. He did a couple things. First thing I learned from him was uh, never change your strings and never clean your strings. And that just gave him a certain tone. It removes some of the higher end frequencies. There's not a lot on bass, but they are there. And also removes some of the sustain, so you have a little bit more control over it. And I read that and I said, I'm in. And I did it. The second thing that I learned from him was jamming basically some foam under the uh, strings up against the bridge. That kind of helps dampen and sustain, uh, dampen the sustain as well. And lastly, it's where you play on your finger. I mean, there's tone controls and things like that. I'm playing on a 1973 P bass, precision bass, Fender. And there's only one tone control. I keep it kind of set maybe about half, maybe a little bit more because I don't want a lot of the top end. Plus, as an old instrument, it's a little bit noisy, so I want to remove that. And lastly, it's the finger. Uh, he always played with one finger. I don't. I play with two fingers. I'm not as adept as he is. Uh, and you can play on the side of your finger, more meaty side, which gives you a more rounded, wide tone. Or you can play with your pads. It depends what's comfortable for you. And also the, the speed of how fast you got to play. That'll determine it. There's three areas that I play when I'm doing tracks. And it always depends on what kind of sound I want. And the sound of the bass, too, and what you're going to get. So the first one is generally, this is pretty common with bass, is resting your thumb on the pickup and playing. That tends to give you more uh, plucky pickup, especially with this one. You've got one two pickups but they're right in the same area they're not spread apart so you got nice you can play up right against the neck where it starts you're getting more of a wider sound than if you want to get meaty you get that too i know you're hearing noise strings but you get the idea so i'll just quickly record something this is a pack i do a strictly roots reggae series for loop packs that's only roots played live i have drums i have the bass etc this is a drum track i'm working on volume three and this is the drums for one of the things so i'll just play along to it to give you an idea plucky go meaty gives you a couple different choices and you can hear the difference immediately We're like one stands out more a little bit in the mix one's more kind of going to tuck under there with the bass drum and it also depends how what the bass drum sound is so if you've got more of a wide bass drum kick, you're going to want a more plucky bass sound with a little bit rolled off on the low end. Conversely, if you have a very kind of tight upper, you know, 100 to 100, 200 kilohertz kick drum that's very tight with not a lot of low end, you can go wide on the bass. So it's generally one or the other. You don't want to mix it because then you get the frequencies crossing over. So there's a short tip for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get some use out of it. I do welcome your comments and feedback. If there's something you'd like to see me cover, let me know, dubmatics at dubmatics.com. I always answer everybody and I love to hear from you. I'll see you again next week. Toronto, Canada.